I, I personally think a lot of it's becoming very academic and people need to learn, learn, get less knowledge and more wisdom. So eventually what will happen is jazz will become music and we'll just say what's happening in music now. I would say William is um, just a very unique individual. I mean, he, he's not um, brainwashed by a lot of the things that brainwash a lot of different people. I mean, his playing is his own, it's organic, it comes out of his own soul, as opposed to being um, just taught. You know, he's not like academic in any way. It really is his own homemade brand of bass playing. It's rooted in the jazz tradition very strongly, and when you hear William, you know that he listened to Jimmy Garrison or um, Charlie Hayden, all, all of those people, Mingus, but it, it's very much his own thing that grew out of his own soul. Guillermo is a very young um, force in the music. You know, he's very open to a lot of things, and he's not really from a jazz background, even though he un he's listened to jazz his whole life and studied jazz. I mean, he's a world musician of sorts. He's a, 
a, a, a young hip hop kid, but he's he's really respectful of the jazz tradition.
And the idea of making the music flow by not saying too much and just letting the, the, the energies of the musicians enter into the, the sound space and, and just giving slight architectural guideposts along the way. Um, with maximum freedom to go where one wants to go and the pin and really having confidence in the players in the band is what Matthew does. He's also an excellent writer. You know, he writes many tunes and, and songs and melodies and motifs. And we use those also. But the, the, the main strength is the uh, improvisation off of these melodies and these motifs and not really letting the music breathe. I mean, I, I think I work best when I'm sort of allowed to breathe and, and be myself and try to find uh, the beauty in the music and let it flow through me and, and also let, it, let, let the music kind of uh, be itself at the same time. So it's, so it's our music, but at the same time it's also the music.
It's a very deep and um, rich history, the jazz piano trio tradition, whether you're looking at it from like the trios, say, that Bud Powell had in the Bill Evans trio with Scott LaFarrell, Poem Motion, to um, just like an, even though it wasn't a trio that worked, the, the, just the trio of Max Roach, Charlie Mingus, and um, Duke Ellington, a money jungle too, whatever. I mean, it's a long, rich tradition. And I, I, people tend to think that they know what a jazz trio was about, but we like to think we can surprise them and kind of find some new ways to explore that old territory. But it's a beautiful tradition, you know. As a pianist, I could sit there and say that I had to give homage to every part of the link in evolution where the hand was developed, because without a hand, I couldn't play piano. So, I mean, yes, it, 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 the tradition leads up to where you are now, but you can't be always genuflecting to the past because you just gotta be who you are in the present, even though the past obviously formed you. But once you start fetishizing the, the past and making a, a idol of it, then it becomes a monster. And it becomes, um, you know, it, bec it becomes unnatural, actually. So, you know, on one level, I'm very respectful to the jazz tradition. A, because I had to have some language to come out of. I mean, I'm not, I didn't just arrive on the earth in a spaceship, you know. As, But at the same time, I just, I got to just be me and, and be in the present. I don't even like to look to the future. Whatever I have, I, whatever the powers, the, the psychological forces, whatever, deems necessary to play play tonight, that's what will be played. And that's really being in the present, not looking to the future and not genuflecting and bowing to the past.
Thank you. 